Welcome to Boundless Love Podcast. Here it's all about next level approach to love, relationships, and sex. I'm your host, Sofia Sundari. I am so excited to welcome you here, beautiful listener. This is my first ever episode of the Boundless Love podcast. I am so happy that you're here and I promise that there will be so much amazing learning, inspiration and transformation that you will experience by listening to this show. So in this episode, I want to share with you uh, what is my idea behind this show, who it is for, whether it is a match for you, and also about who am I and why you should even tune in with me and what you can expect from me. Um, so this is a transformational show. I'm a transformational leader and I've uh, been facilitating transformational events ever since 2012. Everything I do is a prayer, is a dedication, is an offering to the soul of humanity. To It's an invocation to bring forth the truest, the purest in each of us, in every being on this planet. I always dedicate my work, whatever I do, whatever I record, whatever I say, I dedicate it to the highest truth, to the divine. And I dedicate my words, my energy, my life to revelation of the divinity on this planet. So may every act that I Make, make, may every step that I take, may every sound that I utter, may all of that serve that which is the highest on this planet, and that is love. And love is just another name for the divine. So in this show, we are going to specifically look at eroticism, at erotic power, uh, as an incredible energy that each and every one of us has access to ongoing, every moment. And by harnessing this energy, we can access our soul and we can become free as a soul and a human body. Of course, it is not only about sex. Eroticism it is such a big space that we can enter, that we can access. And that space encompasses all of life. So we will also be speaking a lot about relationships and the human heart as a portal to the divine heart. We will also be speaking about love. All of this will be about love because love is something that encompasses everything, the totality of human experience, the totality of universal experience. All of that is encompassed by love. I will speak about how you can live life with more consciousness, with more trust, how you can overcome anything that blocks you from deep intimacy, about healing trauma, about empowering your masculine and feminine energy, about developing skills for next level relationship, and about finding God through sex. So uh, if that's exciting for you, um, please stay with me and please keep coming back to this show um, and if you love it, please leave review. Now, is Boundless Love podcast for you? Most probably, if you are loving it, it is. Yes, 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 it is exactly for you. For you who is someone who is really willing to grow. For you who is willing to open to new perspective, who is willing to discover something new, who really is willing to have your heart touched. If that's you, you are so welcome here. I also want you to know that all of you is welcome. Your age, your sexual preference, your gender identity makes really no difference. If you can receive the depth of what I am talking about, the depth of boundless love that exists in all things, that is beyond all concepts, that can only be lived, that can only be experienced, then you are so welcome here. I want you to know that everything that I'm sharing is my experience. It's also experience of now thousands of people that I have worked with and I received feedback from. So 
If something doesn't quite land for you, if something you don't quite resonate, please know that it's absolutely normal that some things will really resonate with you, other things won't. This is absolutely fine. And um, I don't claim that everything that I say is absolute truth. For some of you, it will be that way. For some people, it is that way. They really feel every word that I say and they really, it really hits home for them. But if it's not you, know that it is okay. If something triggers you and what I say, my invitation is always to see those triggers as an arrow, to see that each trigger that you have is always an arrow that's pointing at you and that there is something that wants to be seen and healed. So, It also may be that you hear something and it really creates a strong reaction inside of you. Maybe a strong disagreement or a strong denial that it is even possible to accept that such opinion has place. So when this happens, celebrate that. Celebrate it as an opportunity to look inside, to look at what is really being touched inside of you. Because really, your opinions are fine. Your opinions are welcome. But sometimes those opinions can be acting like a prison. Sometimes they can be very limiting. So as we mature in consciousness, we learn to hold complexity of things. That one thing is right and at the same time, the other thing is also right. And the other thing is also right. And the other thing is also right. So this is the complexity and we only become capable of holding it as we grow. So As this is a transformational show, know that it also will be presenting you those opportunities to see the complexity, accept this complexity, accept that even sometimes you might think that I am saying one thing that means that I believe in this one thing. And then in another episode, you may hear me saying something that seems to be contradictory, but it's not. It's just about the context. And it's also about this complexity of variety of opinions and seeing how life is so complex, it's so rich and how everything coexists. For example, some days you may feel so traumatized and you may really encounter such deep pain and trauma inside of you. And at the same time, at the very same time, you are a bright and magnificent being, full of light, full of love. These two things, they seem to be opposite to each other, but they manage to coexist in each and every person. I'll share a bit about my story because that's normally what people want to know. And I really want to make an attempt (laughs) to give a really full uh, download of my story or about the most important elements of it, as I believe. So I was born in Russia, in Moscow. I lived all my life, most of my life in the city. And I got a bachelor's degree in international law. So I was doing basically all the right things that are accepted by society. I graduated from the most prestigious university of Russia. That was my uh, striving of my soul. I thought that I need to do something significant. So, okay, let's go to that prestigious university. So I got a degree in international law. Then I got a great job and got promoted very quickly. I had great friends with whom we would party and have fun. Yet, something in me was not satisfied. (laughs) And I was wondering how the hell I'm doing all the right things. But somehow, ah, something in me was just not getting satisfied. Ever since I was a teenager, I was asking my parents, I was asking my friends, but who are we really? But what are we really made of? But what does it mean, this human life? People were telling me I should study philosophy. I did study philosophy in my law studies as well, but it didn't really give me answers. So I wanted to find a deeper meaning in life. I also really wanted to meet a good man, but I kept attracting men who were just not available for the depth of intimacy I was yearning for. And I was also not attracted to those who seemed to be ready. I wanted to be free. I wanted to travel. I wanted to feel powerful on the inside. But yeah, just things were just not falling into place. Then something incredible happened. On a Saturday morning, I woke up from a phone call that changed everything. The night before I was at a party and I made it home and barely got a couple hours of sleep. When the phone rang, I saw that it was the housemate of my best friend calling. It was the first, actually, and only time he ever called me. I picked up to hear words that will forever stay with me. 
Sophia, I have bad news. Misha died. That morning, the world that I knew crushed. I hanged up. I didn't want to believe it. I thought it was a bad joke. I went to my wardrobe to get dressed and suddenly it hit me. I won't see him ever again. Throughout the day, I kept looking at my little Nokia phone, expecting Misha to call. And then a huge wave of sadness took over. He was such a pillar in my life. He taught me so much about life. He gave me the books of Carlos Castaneda, which were really giving me those first glimpses of reality beyond what we are taught about in school. And we were inseparable with him for a year by then. We were doing everything together. He was my first boss. He was my best friend. Together we spoke in a language that I could not speak to anybody else. I knew he got me and I got him. So when his death came, I felt lost, broken, completely disoriented. I also got angry. I thought, how could he leave me like this? I thought we were just getting started. So looking back, I can say that no matter how difficult his death was, it woke me up. I found new parts of me. There was something emerging from inside of me. I was awake and alert in the middle of the storm of his death. That was the first time I experienced what it meant to move from the heart and with total certainty and clarity. His death gave me a new life. And I also realized that I could not spend this life doing things that had no soul. I realized I could not live anymore pretending death did not exist. I realized that this life is precious. And since I'm given this life, I better use it for something meaningful. In the year that followed, I did outrageous things. I took great risks, but most impactful was my trip to India. None of my friends wanted to come with me. It's quite outrageous to just go there, not really knowing what to do. I didn't want to have just a normal touristy experience. I wanted to just really taste the real India. And there, in two weeks, my whole reality turned upside down. When I got back to Russia, something was different. I was taking yoga classes every day. I just, I wanted to drink. I felt thirsty uh, for spiritual knowledge, for connecting with my body in a conscious way. I quit smoking, naturally, and I started to feel a lot of joy. Spontaneous joy, not connected to anything, not connected to whether I felt like I was getting all the attention from all the men that I wanted. It really was joy that didn't have any reason. It was a unconditional joy. Then something that I could not foresee happened. At the peak of my career, when I started to really make good money with my work and being very young and very new in that field, but I was already getting quite successful. So at that very moment, I got fired. I didn't know at the time that that layoff would be the best thing that could have ever happened to me. But at that time, I felt cornered. I had no more income. I was just partying with my friends, drinking, uh, and slowly, slowly spiraling down and hitting the rock bottom of anxiety and depression. I had no idea where to go, who to ask for help, what to do. And uh, I was just sinking lower and lower and lower. I started searching. I was so desperate that I went online and typed in the search box how to become more confident. Uh, Because it did seem like if I was more confident, then I would attract my partner and then he will take care of me and we will be happy after that. And besides of a bunch of regular self-help tips, I came across a book by a Russian author, Vadim Zeland. It's called Reality Transurfing. I was mind blown by this book. I learned that my thoughts were creating my reality, that I could alter my vibration and choose my destiny. It was a huge wake-up call for me. I finally started to ask myself, what did I actually want? And it was clear I did not want that life that I had before. It was clear that I didn't want to end up in this desperate spiral and eventually just losing myself or maybe even taking my life. It felt like that was the pathway if I were to stick to the life that I had. And all I knew that I wanted to be back in India. I felt that I wanted to be touched by sacred again. I wanted to do yoga. I wanted to do meditation. And then once that was clear, 
It, it was amazing. The clarity manifested several clients uh, absolutely without any effort from my side. I literally received phone calls after phone calls. And these people asked me to do certain things for them and pay me for that. And then I made enough money to just get a flight and fly to India. So my painful layoff, that incredible pain of the death of my best friend, opened my eyes to what I actually wanted in my life. So I bought that one one way flight and I ended up in India and India touched me so deeply. I had to leave eventually though and then I I went to Thailand and there I heard of a yoga school. I wanted to go and do some good practice, do some good strong yoga practice. And then I heard of a yoga school, hired a scooter, I went to check it out. When I arrived at that school, a Spanish woman at the registration told me about their yoga program. But also she said, oh my God, you are so lucky. Tomorrow we have our Tantra workshop starting. You should do it. It's amazing. I hesitated for a while. I thought, I don't need help with my sex life. Come on. Like, what is this all about? Um, okay. Well, at the time I didn't have any orgasms. I was really feeling pretty bad about myself that I couldn't attract the right partner. But still, I kind of didn't really connect the dots. I thought I didn't need any help. But then something in me got pulled and that was another huge decision because I found so much depth and so much beauty in the teachings and it was way, way, way beyond the sex life uh, as you will also learn through this podcast or maybe have been learning already through my work. I also took a meditation retreat the following months, a silent meditation retreat I was so nervous. We were supposed to be in silence, not interacting with anybody for 10 days. And what we were supposed to do is just like for about eight, nine hours every single day, we were supposed to listen to spiritual teachings and meditate without moving. It was a big stretch for me. I remember asking someone who had done six retreats by then. I approached him and I asked, so did it work? Did you get enlightened? I asked him with total sincerity. He chuckled and he said, no, I thought to ask for a refund, but they wouldn't offer it. (laughs) So the retreat was a torture. It was a true, absolute torture. Sometimes we had to sit in a meditation position for up to three hours in one go. Even five minutes without moving was a real stretch for me. I was always distracting myself, reading, writing during meditations. But I also experienced something incredible because there were a lot of techniques of quieting the mind. And uh, the techniques didn't seem to work for me, but I I took that time to really look inside. And uh, it was the first time in my life that I really looked inside and very deep inside about my whole life, about my family about all my relationships, about my patterns. I got to see my life as if from a distance. And what touched me incredibly was poetry of the poet Rumi. Uh, My teacher, Sahajananda, was reading a lot of poems and uh, from some other authors, Shankaracharya, for example, the Nirvana Shaktam. I found so much devotion in that poetry and completely unexpectedly to me, it was touching some really deep strings in my heart. It was softening something inside of me. And it was reminding me of that longing that I've always known very deeply in my heart. It's the same longing that we can hear in the howl of the wolves or in the sounds of the whales. It's that same longing that made me ask when I was a teenager of others, like, but who we are? Who, what are we made of? What, why are we here? And I had my first Satori moment in that retreat. Satori is a peak experience of seeing one's own true nature as divine. I had not much concept about that at that time. I just knew about that elusive uh, concept of enlightenment. And uh, my experience took me by surprise. Uh, It was not even during meditation that I experienced it, but it was in a break. I was actually sitting on my cushion, looking around, and then all of a sudden, everything got quiet. And I saw myself, as if from a distance, laughing uncontrollably for a while. Maybe it was three minutes, maybe it was 20 seconds, maybe it was 20 minutes. Time is not perceived in the same way when you are in a higher state of consciousness. I felt bliss without any reason, effervescence, freedom of spirit. I felt myself as spirit. 
I was touched by grace. It was incredible. After that, it was clear. It was one way road. There was no turning back. That experience made me stay with that school in Thailand for the following four years. I did the full yoga program of 24 months. I did multiple silent meditation retreats. Some of them were up to 17 day long. In parallel to that, I was developing a relationship with my now ex-husband. And uh, he introduced me to the work of Samuel Sagan, the founder of Clarvision School of Meditation. And that, again, created a huge breakthrough in myself. Through the practice of the school, I liberated so much of past karma. I came to a whole new level of me. I stayed with the school and I still consider myself a student of that school because that really, the techniques, the practices, the work, the also prolonged eight-month meditation retreat that I did with that school is, uh, is a backbone of my life. In 2012, I got certified as a Tantra teacher and as a Hatha Yoga teacher. I started teaching. Then I invested more time, more energy into my education between India, jungles of Thailand and Bali, also desert of California, mountains of Colombia and Australia, where I was practicing six to eight hours of meditation, inner space techniques, Hatha Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, Tantra, every single day. I was also undergoing a lot of sexual healing, although I never thought I needed any, but uh, I was discovering myself beyond myself. And uh, my newly discovered orgasmicness was healing me from within and opening me up beyond what I ever thought was possible. Rediscovering my sexual energy from a conscious perspective was a very important experience that I needed to start living fully and experiencing the bigger aspects of myself and creating life beyond my wildest dreams. Then uh, in 2013, I started to run long programs. I had a one-week-long program, then a three-week-long Sacred Feminine Aversion program that I held in India. From the very first classes that I was offering, I was receiving amazing feedback from my students. They felt held, cared for, loved in my presence. But the biggest change happened for me in, in my personal life, in my spiritual life, and also in my teaching life in 2015, when I met a famous spiritual teacher of Zen and non-duality, Muji. Before meeting him, I somewhat had a similar approach to spiritual path as I had to my studies in uni. I was practicing to get somewhere, but instead of getting approval of my teachers, I was trying to get approval of God. My hardcore practice was to a certain degree fueled by not feeling good enough, seeking to become someone more evolved, more conscious, more spiritual. Once I met Muji, I started crying. Just the moment I saw him, I started crying and I could not stop crying for the whole week that I was in my first retreat led by him. A whole new level of realization of life and recognition of myself as life started landing for me. Very soon after that, I rediscovered the concept of Dharma. Uh, it was particularly helpful to be in the container held by another very important teacher in my life, Shamili Arda. She mirrored a fierce commitment as an act of service back at me. Dharma is the highest destiny of one's soul. It's a supreme alignment to one's true path. And I realized that my work is my way to commune with God. Because it is God's grace that creates through me and leads through me. Personal effort is nothing compared to grace of divinity that can be moved through me if I dare to get out of the way. That year everything changed. I decided to break out of my old life. It was just happening. I didn't even decide it consciously, but it was just this river of grace was carrying me. And I knew that, that was it. My life was never going to be the same again. I separated from my husband. I gave up my home in Portugal and I leaped into the unknown. It was scary as hell because I really did not know what are my further steps, but I knew I had to leap. 
I became unstoppable in my dedication to my work, just like, like I had been in my dedication to my spiritual path. I wanted to create. I wanted to express my soul. I wanted to move others in a way that I was moved. In the beginning of my path, there was a lot of resistance. I thought I did not need help with intimacy. I didn't need help with sexuality. I didn't need help with anything else, really. I thought I was okay as I was. I was scared to commit to practice. I did not believe that I could have had more than what I had. I was taking it a day at a time. It was too scary to commit. I kept questioning every single day whether I should have traveled more and sought for a better school, better teachers, more this, more that. Fear of my own greatness took various shapes. That's what I can say. Basically, today, when I look back at this journey, I can say that I went from a woman who was in deeply lacking self-worth and incredibly confused and continually choosing the wrong guys. Uh, and um, now I look at myself and I see a woman who lives from her heart and she serves from her heart and she thrives in love with an amazing man. And I feel in the right place at the right time. I feel, I feel that there, there is a communion of my soul and my body. My work is service to love. Now I see myself as a conscious entrepreneur, transformational leader, best-selling author, now also podcast host, founder of a transformational school, creators of multiple online courses. I've created a business that has changed life of over 150,000 people to date from over 80 countries. I facilitated over a hundred of trainings and workshops all over the planet. I've had people tell me that after following my content, they gained a higher understanding of truth. Working with me, they've managed to attract their dream partners. Several women managed to get pregnant after years of trying, even though some doctors told me that they will never get pregnant. So many of my students share that they fall in love with their humanity. They fall in love with their body. They heal entirely discomfort that is caused by this body, for example, cramps during period of premenstrual syndrome. They notice that they become free from old wounds and open to a whole new life of possibilities. What matters most is that all of those things are not about becoming happier. It's not about attracting your perfect partner, creating your perfect life even. It's really all of this. It's not even about becoming very sexually open and orgasmic and thriving in life. All of those things are rather side effects because what matters most is that my life and therefore my work and everything I do, everything I touch is dedicated to love. Whether I'm speaking, leading groups, writing books, making conscious content through social media, all of this is in service of the same thing. All of this is in service to love. So this is quite a bit about my story. Of course, I could elaborate a lot more. I hope that was interesting for you. That's what it feels good to share at this point. So what is coming in this podcast? Uh, what will I talk to you about? And uh, we will talk about all sorts of things. And remember that no matter what we talk about, really all of that is about love. I will speak about sexuality because it is such a core essence of who we are. We cannot not speak about sex. It's Incredible how much taboo was created in society around sex. So we will speak about how to find God through sex. What does this conscious spiritual sex really mean? I will also speak my understanding of boundless love. What is it really? And if it is something like really out there or if it is accessible easily to every human being. We will speak about in detail about masculine and feminine dynamic There's so much 
like it's such a beautiful concept, but there can be so much misunderstanding and more confusion can be created uh, when there is a misunderstanding of this. So I will clarify much of that. So you're welcome to stay on and keep listening. And I'm sure you will learn and get inspired and possibly even transformed how it happened to many, many people who are subscribed to my social media channel and my newsletter. I constantly receive this feedback from people that they get transformed just by following me. And then when they choose to take the next step and join either my online courses or my trainings, then even more becomes accessible to them. So I would love for you to hit subscribe and get ready to see your erotic heart blossom with every episode. So thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to keep sharing this journey with you.